Hi, I hope you're well. I really hope you've been looking after yourself and that you've had a good week. Well, we've got a lovely cruise today, quite exciting and some wonderful stories to share. So I hope you've got a cup of tea and you're sitting comfortably. So here we are again, enjoying a cruise and a moving day. And we're heading today towards Foxton Locks. Now our aim is to move once a week, but it doesn't always work out like that. Why do we like to be in one place for one week? Well, first of all, it gives us an opportunity to properly explore the place that we've moored the boat and, you know, get to see somewhere that we otherwise wouldn't have stopped at. Then it takes me, maybe I'm just long and I don't know really, but it takes me three days to film and edit a vlog for each week. Then I do lesson planning for online lessons and that normally takes me a while ordering the food shop, foraging wood, and also I've got a couple of new projects, arty poetry projects, which I'll update you about another time. But it just means that it's really good to be in one spot for one week to achieve all that. It's quite tricky driving today because it's very windy and wind is not a narrow boater's best friend. Okay, so I'm going to go to the left when I get in the lock because the wind's blowing us over to that side. Oh, what's that? Just when I was reversing, just to straighten the boat up in the lock, that sound, I I think it must what be something that? underneath the boat in the log. But despite being breezy, it's a perfect day for cruising. And as soon as we get out of this lock, quite quickly we are going to be approaching Saddington Tunnel. And this is the tunnel that has a colony of bats. This is Fleckney, this is actually Fleckney Bridge and this village was built on glacial clay which explains its first main industry of brick making. They would dig the mud out and shape the bricks by hand. Now here is Mill Wood which was a Woodlands Trust Millennium project. On the right hand side you can see these gorgeous trees and it's also the home to a meadow and the yellow meadow ant. And now this is Saddington Tunnel. So we're going in now and um, I think by this time of year I'll have to look it up, the Dorbenton bats will be hibernating so you might see them to 
just sleeping, hanging around. We'll have a look. We might not see anything. As well as a colony of Dorbenton bats, the tunnel also has a ghost apparently, the headless ghost of a lady called Anna. So we'll keep an eye out for her. Oh, baby. Then half a mile later we were leaving Saddington Tunnel without seeing one single Dorbanton bat. However, we had picked up some new spiders that seemed to have checked in to our buck hotel. I think we picked these spiders up in the tunnel. The Leicestershire countryside, particularly from the canal, has been such a beautiful surprise. It's just spectacular to cruise through. And to top it all off, we've got a little flock of starlings, all looking after each other while they're feeding, making sure everyone's safe. Oh, I just love starlings. at Debdale Wharf which used to mark the place where you could travel no further than as this was the end of the Leicester line you couldn't get to the south of the system until they connected it so this is where we moored and just in front of Rainbow Bridge, called that because it used to be shaped like a rainbow where the ramps were facing the same direction. Look, that's Kingfisher Tree. With the orange of the setting sun on their breasts and the blue sky on their back, you cannot help but get excited when you see a kingfisher. In fact, you, you just shout out, it's a kingfisher, as they zip past. But this one just sat opposite our boat on the branch and just stared at us.
but this one wasn't interested in fishing, just staring. But this mooring was only two days and you get charged £25 per day that you stay over the two days. So we had to move. But just before we moved, I met a follower of the channel and a real kindred spirit, Lizzie. And I went out with Lizzie for the morning and she showed me some really interesting things in the local area. There's many theories behind the stone, but geologists believe that a retreating glacier left it behind. And it's called the Judith Stone because actually it marked the boundary of Judith's land. And who was Judith? She was the niece of William the Conqueror, and that land was given to her by him. Also in Lebanon, Lizzie was telling me about this really famous stable block that has housed and trained some really famous horses, uh, one of which is the 1865 winner of the Grand National, which became the youngest horse ever to win a Grand National at the time at the age of five. This is where they used to watch the horses train from up here. And also Lizzie had spotted these amazing shaggy ink caps. I had a great day, Lizzie, and hopefully we'll get together again soon. Even though we'd had to move our boat, we didn't have to move it far. And I am so glad we did, because I discovered something I've been looking for for a long time. Through this little gate. Come on, Zephyr. Zephyr, come on. The first thing you see is this replica water pump and this was the place where the original water pump stood that basically supplied the village with soft water. I think it became Softwell Lane, it was known as Softwell Lane after that and it also supplied the laundries, the many laundries of Foxton and then next to the water pump is this bench and what I love about this bench particularly is it's got an Albert Einstein quote, oh no. <laughs> deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. Got nesting boxes there. I'm at Foxton. I'm at Foxton and I've just seen a fox. It's absolutely beautiful.
So Jenny from Western Australia has um, oh, I can't get this really what's like that. Has sent me this gift. It's <laughs> exciting. Oh, there's a card with love from Western Australia. Oh. oh, Jenny makes her own. She's an artist. Oh, there's so many lovely little things in here. I'm just going to have a look at and show oh, some lovely photographs, which I'm going to save and read this person uh, personally because it's a personal message but i'm just going to hold up this gorgeous dragonfly it's like a damselfly drawn to nature through the journals of claire walker leslie which looks like a gorgeous book i've not read it before also brisbane is a garden i've been to brisbane i love brisbane Brisbane is a garden by June Kelly. Um, I will read this all. A massive thank you, Jenny. It's so kind of you. Sorry about all the hassle getting it to me, but thank you. Sheep and crows in rolling fields, a tunnel full of bats, hidden, very hidden bats, tucked in boxy slats. Starlings in a chattering, leapfrog for a meal, up and over bird cartwheel along the grassy hill. By rainbow bridge, in a tree, a bird of sky and sun, settles in, her fishing's done, Observing's now begun. Watch the boat folk moving. See them greet new friends. Turn before the locks ascend, round the water's bend. And there it is, ears twitching, with a chest of full moon white, a coat of smoky sunset light flitting into night. <laughs> 